Hello and welcome to NTA Nationwide. I'm Naja Atsutajani with the latest stories from across the country. And we'll begin with news from the presidency. President Muhammadu Buhari has asked the Ministry of Women Affairs and the Ministry of Justice to collaborate more effectively with the National Assembly towards securing a legal backing for increased women participation in politics in the ongoing constitutional and electoral reform processes. This was while addressing members of the national and international working groups supporting the advancement of gender equity initiative during a courtesy visit. The president also lent his voice to the amendment of his party's constitution to provide for effective and meaningful participation of women in elective offices. State House correspondent Adam Usambo reports. Nigeria is more than ever committed to join in raising the bar for women's representation at all levels. Describing women as a credible force in strengthening Nigeria's democracy, sustaining her socio-economic fabric, and promoting the culture of peace, President Muhammad Buhari said his administration will not leave anything to chance in promoting women's inclusiveness in national development. Given the size of our population, more can be done to improve the participation of Nigerian women in politics and in seeking elective office. Education of the girl child and the empowerment of mothers are fundamental to achieving an increase in the number of female leaders in the country and our objective of lifting 100 million out of poverty in 10 years. He said whatever it takes can be done towards tackling the twin evils of limited access to education and poverty, as well as gender-based violence. Despite the spike of incidents of abduction of school children and other security challenges, this government remains resolute in its pursuit of a just and credible society, devoid of inequalities and promotion of the rule of law. Let me assure you all that we remain committed to working with groups such as yours to address these challenges. Already, the President said an interministerial committee has been inaugurated towards addressing all forms of violence against women and children, while 45% of the small and medium scale enterprises funds has been reserved exclusively for women. President Buhari also takes pride in entrusting key government portfolios to women and also engaging in what he called intense diplomacy to support the aspirations of Nigerian women to provide leadership at the global stage. We will continue to support them to succeed and we shall continue to advocate our women who qualify to lead international fora. APC chieftain and former Senate President Ken Namani said the governing party already has a legacy of giving women the greatest chance to rise in the history of the country, saying this will also improve the party's fortunes in elections. There are not only women were kind of encouraging our ladies to participate more in Nigerian politics. I feel overwhelmed with joy. I feel elected on, on behalf of Nigerian women. And I believe that the more we have women in elective positions, the better for this country. I trust Mr. President and I know that he will leave a legacy that will stand the test of time in this country on women issues. We need more women in the system. And Mr. President has promised and see a whole lot of difference once that um, happens. We've waited long uh, for this to happen and we are delighted that uh, we will move on to the level of uh, actually bringing this to become reality. Former President of the Republic of Malawi, Dr. Joyce Banda, delivered a good message at the event commemorating the 2021 International Women's Day with the theme, Women in Leadership, Achieving an Equal Future in a Coronavirus World. From the State House, Adamusambu, NTA News.
And history has been made in Tanzania with Samia Sulhu Hassan taking oath of office as Tanzania's president, making her the country's first woman to assume the position. Adibola Brooksland Sunday reports that she has also become the first female president in East Africa. Mimi, Samia Sulhu Hassan. Na atakwamba nitakuwa mwaminifu kwa jamhuri ya muungano wa Tanzania. Samia Suluhu Hassan is a soft spoken woman from vice president position to Tanzania's first female leader after John Magufuli's sudden death. Born in 1960 in Zanzibar, a former slaving hub and trading outpost in the Indian Ocean, Samia graduated from high school and at 17, she took a clerkship in a government office after she publicly said her finishing results were poor. After undertaking further study, she rose through the ranks to become a developmental officer in the Zanzibari government. She was employed as a project manager for the UN's World Food Program. And later, in the 1990s, Samia Suluhu was made executive director of an umbrella body governing non-governmental organizations in Zanzibar. She became a parliament member for the Makudunchi constituency from 2010 to 2015 and has been Minister of State in the Vice President's Office for Union Affairs since 2010. In 2014, she served as the Vice Chairperson for the Constitutional Assembly, which was tasked with drafting Tanzania's new constitution. Sulu is married and have three sons and a daughter who is a member of the Zanzibar House of Representatives. After consulting with her Chamacha Mapidunzi ruling party, Suluhu will propose her possible successor as vice president to be confirmed by the National Assembly. Under the constitution, 61-year-old Suluhu will serve the remaining Magufuli second five-year term, which will expire in 2025. Adebola, Brooksland Sunday, NTA News. Meanwhile, reactions have continued to trail the emergence of the first female president of Tanzania, Samia Sulhu Hassan. Here is an excerpt from our earlier chat with Paul James, program manager, elections, Yaga Africa. She is there by chance, yes, but then um, it also goes to show that even the issues, uh, people are beginning to take the issues about women inclusion very serious. And even on their part, people, uh, women are beginning to take uh, charge and uh, bringing themselves forward in positions of le uh, uh, leadership. She doesn't just emerge uh, the president of Tanzania overnight. This is sheer hard work, sheer commitment, sheer dedication something she has been passionate about. She has been around the corridors of power since the 2010, when she was in the parliament, and then had contested in the election twice with the president. So it also showed her grit and her determination to remain there. Yes, Paul, you said she came in by chance. Now, do you think the African continent has come to an age where women can win via elections? This is not the first time that this is happening. Um, Liberia has done that twice with Ellen Johnson. Ethiopia, though that is a point by parliament, but even in Mauritius, it has happened in the past. Yes, we, are, we have come up with that this is going to happen. Women have demonstrated the capacity. We have seen the likes of Kunja Iwalana that everybody is celebrating. Think about uh, most of the uh, big... Uh, organizations across the world that are now ruled by women. Quite obvious that you're an advocate for women in politics. Now, what advice do you have for women? Of course, I think they should see this as, for me, uh, this should support them, this should challenge women, this should be a motivation for them that if uh, so no can get the chance, they too can get the chance. They need to bring themselves uh, up and also not just bring it themselves up, people need to also give women that platform for women to try. Here in Abuja, the FCT Minister of State, Ramatu Tijani Aliu has declared that women deserve an equal future, free from stigma, 
violence as well as equal rights and opportunities for all. The minister said this at a World Press conference as, conference as part of activities commemorating the International Women's Day in Abuja, where many NGOs graced the event. Ifani Izumba reports. The leadership achieving an equal future in COVID-19 world with a sub theme has choose to challenge. While appreciating the numerous NGOs in the field of women, FCT Minister of State Ramatu Tijani Aliu pointed out that when women lead, there will always be positive results. Women are yet to form the critical mass in the legislation, that is in the uh, legislative arm. We are just about 1% now. So we are calling upon women to actually come out, to be bold enough to contest, to vie for positions. Permanent Secretary Olushade Adeshola said, the welfare of women has always been of paramount importance to the FCT administration. The issue of participation of women in the service, is, it, has become, it has become the norm. In FCT administration, it is also the situation. Secretary, Social Development Secretary, Kevin Ike, and others stress that the essence of the program is to build a strong women fold in the FCT. What we do in Social Development Secretariat is total emancipation of women and children in the area of eliminating extreme poverty, employment generation, wealth creation, and value reorientation. To hold on tenaciously to the victories that we are already seeing. And we stand by the slogan for this year's, you know, sub team, choose to challenge. Having seen what women can do, both at a national and local level, it is important that that space be created to encourage other women to step in. Presentation of special gift on behalf of FCT women by the FCT Minister of State. Among the recipients are the Permanent Secretary, FCTA, Acting Secretary, FCT Health and Human Services Secretariat, among others. In Abuja, Ifangi, Isumba, and Tinos. The federal government is set to introduce a central monitoring system which will help in keeping an eagle eye on the activities of lottery operators in Nigeria. At a meeting with the operators, the Minister of Special Duties and Intergovernmental Affairs, George Akume, said government would not hesitate to sanction any operator which is not meeting up in its statutory obligations, Kunle Adeye reports. Lottery is being practiced in almost every country, but it is regulated to protect all interests. In Nigeria, the authorities have some irregularities and are moving to address them. Minister of Special Duties and Intergovernmental Affairs George Akume was blunt in his submissions to the lottery operators. It's 2005, when the commission was created by an act of parliament, the industry has never been regulated properly. We are determined to make a difference now. The operators offered explanation for their inability to comply to government directives, citing pressures from state governments as reasons but regulatory agencies in charge of lottery operations gave more insight. We don't have any issues with this which we've also identified from my own engagement with uh, most of the state regulators. But we need to have a policy from both the regulators and the national body that would be presented to you, sir, the Honorable Minister, which will also be further given to the um, Governor's Forum. Some of the your own activities are done online real time, isn't it? And of course, by so doing, it is assumed that all Nigerians across the nooks and crannies of this country are participating in your games. Uh, if that is the case, it is nullifying the issue of state licensing. It was also disclosed that the meeting that a bill which will clearly spell out functions of governments at national and sub-national levels will be forwarded to the National Assembly in Abuja, Kunle, Adeyei, NTA News. 
The federal government has inaugurated the Reconstituted National Productivity Order of Merit Award Committee for the purpose of selecting deserving awardees for conferment. The committee is tasked with the responsibility of selecting and recommending individuals and organizations for conferment of the National Productivity Order of Merit Award by the President. Inaugurating the committee in Abuja, the Minister of Labor and Employment, Chris Ngigi, stated that the reconstitution of this committee and its inauguration demonstrates government's commitment to enhancing productivity in Nigeria. So, that you hit the ground running so that we can have nominees for 2019 and 2020, we couldn't do both because of the COVID intervention. But even with the COVID, we now said the time is now. Let us see how to build back what we seem to have lost. Minister urged the committee to apply probity and fairness in the discharge of its responsibilities. The committee has a representative of the productive sector as chairman in the person of Barrister Ikechi Uko. The non-implementation of the consequential adjustment of pensions arising from the implementation of the 2019 national minimum wage is becoming a thing of worry for members of the Nigeria Union of Pensioners. The retirees have given a 21-day ultimatum in compliance with the Trade Unions Act for their concerns to be addressed by the three tiers of government. home our legitimate demand but to no avail we are left with no option than to embark on a nationwide protest as that is the only language our governments in this country understand if nothing is done within the stipulated time we shall take to the streets in all the states of the Federation. Despite the non-implementation of the consequential adjustment of the 2019 national minimum wage, the senior citizens have expressed gratitude to the federal government for the payment of 10 months residual arrears of pension, as well as regular payment of monthly pension. The Ogun State House of Assembly says it will not relent in efforts at legislating laws to enhance peaceful coexistence between farmers and herders in the state. This was the outcome of a public hearing on a bill before the Ogun State House of Assembly to regulate animal grazing and establishment of cattle ranches at designated areas in the state. Hakim Chimo's report is here presented. Public hearing attracted stakeholders in the agricultural sector from across the state who made impute to the process of legislating a law that will regulate cattle grazing. While commending the House for the initiative, the stakeholders rejected the establishment of cattle ranches at designated areas as contained in the bill, noting that animal rearing should be handled strictly as a business. The Speaker, Ogun State House of Assembly, Olakunle Olomo, suggested that the influx of cattle into the country should be regulated through head count and firm border control. The law that 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 the law the law that the law that the law 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 the law the law to provide for the registration of community development association was also discussed at another public hearing. The federal government moves against substandard steel. Details of this and more from our Lagos Network Center. Kendi is our guide. Hello, Kendi. 
Majatu, and a warm welcome to Lagos. As one of the major materials used for building and other civil engineering construction all over the world, the steel industry is essential to the industrial growth of any nation. However, recent experiences of building collapse in parts of the country have also shown that these materials have a lot to do with the physical well-being of man. In this package, Adene Itaiwo reports on plans by the federal government to rid the steel industry of substandard steel products which have now flooded the market. Of collapsed buildings are always disturbing, yet there are common realities in Nigeria, especially in cosmopolitan areas such as Lagos. In 2016, the collapse of a five-story building under construction in Lekki, Lagos, left 34 casualties, while a three-story building housing school pupils left 20 dead. Most often, these incidents are blamed on the use of substandard building materials, especially steel bars used for reinforced concrete to provide deep foundation and basement, among others. The attendant loss of lives and shelter is not acceptable to the federal government, and its quality control agencies are now redoubling efforts to ensure sanity in the steel industry. We're going to sample the market randomly. We're going to make sure every uh, distributor who is found wanting is prosecuted. To further drive home, the message that government will no longer tolerate the presence of substandard steel in the market, the agency, at an interaction with stakeholders to give what it calls fair warning to distributors and manufacturers of steel rod, says it will maintain regular market surveillance and monitoring of building sites. We have given them monitorium to evacuate those things and then do away with them, take them back to the furnace and melt them. Because if we see you with substandard product, we'll trace the manufacturer. They say ensuring standard in the steel industry is equally important for the economy. Now that the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement presents manufacturers and exporters of quality products in Nigeria the opportunity to explore the African regional market. In Lagos, Adinita, NTA News. Continuous repositioning of the Naval Training Command NAFTRAC to meet world-class standard and boost security on the waterways are an important part of the command's mandate. Royal Admiral Kamar Din Lawa, flag officer of the NAFTRAC, reiterated this in his message to the command personnel in Lagos. Lynn Liliki reports. heralds a new era for the Naval Training Command, NAFTRAC, with the signing and handover of notes, including presentation of the command's flag, Rear Admiral Kamaruddin Lawal is set to settle in as a flag officer commanding NAFTRAC. I want to congratulate you once again, and I wish you success as you take over command. With a success story of churning out personnel to inject new innovations and rejuvenate the system, the flag officer commanding, Rear Admiral Kamaruddin, assured personnel of welfare and sought collective collaboration in combating criminalities in the maritime domain. He reiterated the command's resolve to carry out all assigned functions for the benefit of the nation. To move this command forward from wherever he has taken it to, I will do my best to see what new innovations we bring on board with the support and advice from a lot of you out there. The command held a farewell parade in honor of the former flag officer commanding NAFTRAC, Rear Admiral Frederick Ogu, who is as Director of Civil Military Relations. In Lagos, Lynn Lenake, NTA News. There is a renewed vigor to achieve the mandate of reducing the cost of doing business at Nigerian ports by 30%, as the Nigerian ship has cancelled is compiling a register of regulated service providers with the view of streamlining tariff charges and fees payable for services rendered within the port community. Marco Olale reports. When the federal government in 2014 appointed the Nigerian Shippers Council as the port economic regulator, the purpose was to create an effective regime at Nigerian ports 
for the control of tariff, rates, and other economic services to prevent arbitrariness in charges. In order to achieve this mandate, a register of regulated service providers was opened in 2019 to monitor and enforce standard at Nigerian ports while eliminating abuse of dominant market position. Participants from the, the ICDs. The agency therefore through this platform is reminding terminal operators, shipping lines, freight forwarders and cargo consolidators of the need to register because of its immense benefits to the maritime industry. Again, in terms of economic planning, it will help government to predict the number and type of operators in the port sector. The third benefit is on the issue of authenticating the genuineness of port service providers. We need to control the entry and exit of service providers into the port. Since the guidelines for registration was issued, only a few organizations have responded, and for those yet to signal their interest, a grace of one month has been activated after which the agency reserves the right to sanction violators. And sanctions can be in form of warning. Sanctions can equally be in, 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 in form of sealing the premises of the service provider. You know, sanctions can be in form of delisting. This move is one of the numerous interventions under the new port regime aimed at encouraging ease of doing business. In Lagos, Michael Olale, NT News. We'll go on a short commercial break. The news continues shortly. Hello, I bring you wonderful news. The village headmaster is coming back to your screen. Mowiri Abimi Owiri. Bona better school for last giddy. Now be honest on a rugged yeah, yes school for each I know I know I don't know for you. Sega, it's called Oja Village. Can you see? We know happy at all at all. Yeah, at all. And I know that even you too, you are getting a lot of orders. Too. Hey, we are trying to shower. Sweep her leg out. She was standing there. Sweep it. I love you so much. And how did I give you the impression that I was interested in that position? 15 year anniversary. You mean anniversary? I mean, it's not even I talk with that now. Now, could I not farm you? You want to make a guy me? Not farm me because of farm you. Oh, money, recipe. Certified, safe, and usable by NAFTA.
task to done 24 hours a day. NTA International is with you in your living room, office, everywhere and anywhere. We provide the company you desire in terms of balanced and up-to-date news, programs and the best of entertainment. Tune in to DSTV Channel 251, Go TV Channel 91, Freeview UK Channel 264 or you can download www.visiontv.co.uk app for iOS or Android. You can also see us on Facebook and YouTube for quality content on the go. NTA International, Africa's window to the world. Fresh off a derby win, the Gunners travel to take on the Hammers in another London derby. Will they make it two out of two? Find out as West Ham take on Arsenal at the London Stadium this Sunday on the Premier League Live, showing on the network service of the NTA from 3.30 p.m. The Premier League Live is brought to you by Access Bank, Baba Ijebu, Lipton T, and Close Up in association with Goal.com. Welcome back to our Abuja studios. If you're just joining us, this is Nationwide on NTA. The Court of Appeal Abuja has set aside the judgment of the Federal High Court Abuja, which found the National Universities Commission and Zane Nigeria Limited, now Airtel, guilty of copyright infringement when TV Extra Production Chief Executive Officer Christian Ugodo alleged his intellectual property was used without his permission. Justice Mohammed Mustafa delivered the unanimous judgment of the three-man panel of justices of the court. Judiciary correspondent Farah Chimbuba was at the Court of Appeal and now reports. Universities Commission and Zane Nigeria Limited, now Airtel, filed the appeal challenging the judgment of the lower court, which found the two organizations guilty of copyright infringement of using intellectual property of TV Extra Production Chief Executive Officer Christian Ogodo without his permission. In allowing the appeal, the Court of Appeal, in a unanimous judgment of three man panel of justices delivered by Justice Mohammed Mustafa, said the trial court aired and ought not have a Assumed jurisdiction on the ground that the action was statute barred and therefore contravening Section 2A of the Public Protection Officers Act. The court also held that the award of 500 million naira as damages was in error. Oh, it was a fantastic judgment. Um, I'm sure our clients are happy and uh, effectively justice was done. We are dissatisfied at this point that is TV Extra Productions Limited. We are dissatisfied and we are going to challenge it on appeal further to the Supreme Court. The respondent, Christian Agoda, a journalist, had commenced the suit in 2008 against the appellant over a usage of his intellectual property without his permission. In Abuja, Viera Chimuba, NTA News. The need for the academia to get involved in governance, give an intellectual face to public office and birth an unequal development came to the fore during the visit of the Vice Chancellor, University of Calabar, Professor Florence Bankobi, to the Cross River State Governor on the forthcoming 34th convocation of the institution. Paul Abel reports. Professor Florence Obi, the 11th Vice Chancellor of the University of Calabar, who commended Governor Ayade for his gender friendly disposition in key appointments into public offices, also appeals for support to the institution to successfully host its upcoming 31st convocation ceremony. As the father of the state, we will be very pleased to have the governor grace the occasion and play host to the dignitaries that will be coming. Governor Ben Ayade, on his part, commends the new VC for restoring discipline and marriage to the school, and making a 100 million naira special contract to the school for the supply of chicken to the state chicken processing factory, Kalachika. Employees or people who seek jobs is fast changing honor Professor Flores will be to create and train people who will become potential employers of labor. 
I think the adjustment of the university curricula to reflect all of these communities within the confines of the different departments and faculties is imperative. The governor is calling on Cross River people to get involved in industrialization and add value to the society. In Calabar, Paul Abel, NGA News. We have seen 135 new cases of COVID-19 have been confirmed in Nigeria in the last 24 hours. In the figures released by the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, the new infections are from 15 states and the FCT, with Lagos State having the highest number with 41 cases. A state-by-state -state chart shows that Imo is second with 20 new cases, Ogun with 14, Kebbi 11, the FCT and Rivers 10 each, Akwaibom 8 and Plateau 4. Others with new infections are Ebonyi, Kaduna, Kano and Oshun states with three cases each. Oyo state has two. The chart is completed by Ekiti, Gumbi and Nasarawa with one case each. With this, Nigeria now has 161,409 confirmed cases of COVID-19, out of which 146 thousand cases have been treated and discharged. And in continuation of sensitization of Nigerians on the safety and efficacy of the AstraZeneca vaccine, the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency, in collaboration with the Nigerian Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, has met with Muslim scholars and imams on the ongoing COVID-19 vaccination. The forum provided the opportunity for leaders of the organization to ask questions and get clarification on some salient issues, myths and misconceptions surrounding the vaccines. The Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, said vaccination is an integral part of efforts at containing the pandemic and the latest measure at ensuring that Nigerians are protected from the virus. He appealed to Muslim leaders to educate adherents on the need to present themselves for vaccination. Vaccination. Even come to your house, we won't see you. We only advise you. We only try to appeal to you, like we did with the polio vaccine decades ago, and today we are polio free. There were so many negative comments and reports about polio vaccine then. It was meant to stop our children from producing and things like that. But they did stop our children from producing. Definitely no. Not everybody will get the information that the European Union, the regulatory body, has now reversed and provided clarity and validated that the use of AstraZeneca is safe. So bad news travels very fast, but when there is good news, not everybody gets access to it. But it is very important and instrumental that a day after the European Medicines Agency cleared the air on the linkage between AstraZeneca and blood clotting that we're meeting here today to deliberate further. So therefore, we can, with every sense of correctness, take this vaccine as a gift from above, the vaccines against COVID-19, and to ensure that our people are protected when it is their turn to take this vaccine. And that report was an encouraging Islamic adherence to get vaccinated. It's time to join Fatima Hassan in our Makudi Network Center, where Benway State has flagged off the COVID-19 vaccination. Hello, Fatima. Take it from here. Hello, Najatu. Good evening and welcome to Makudi. Bailey State Government says people should disregard the rumors and misinformation making the rounds about the efficacy of the COVID-19 vaccine. Commissioner for Health and Human Services, Dr. Joseph Ngbeya, gave the advice at the official flag off of the COVID-19 vaccination exercise in Makudi, the state's capital. Blessing Omecha Ebute reports that frontline health workers and top military officers were amongst the first beneficiaries of the vaccine.
Last week, the Benue state government took delivery of over 70,000 doses of Oxford AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccines from the federal government. Consequently, the state government has already hit the ground running in administering the vaccine with the official flagging off of the exercise. I've just taken mine, just a little prick. I would say less than a mosquito bite. Uh, I pray to take the second one to uh, go ahead to have the full immunity. Commissioner for Health and Human Services, Dr. Joseph Ungbea, who represented the governor, says frontline health workers will be the first beneficiaries in the first phase of the exercise. I call on people to voluntarily present themselves for COVID-19 vaccination and to be available to take the second dose in 12 weeks' time. The World Health Organization and other relevant international and local agencies who witnessed the event emphasized that the vaccination is not an end to the pandemic, but advise people to still adhere to non-pharmaceutical interventions and other safety protocols such as hand hygiene, use of face masks and maintaining physical distancing. I urge that we don't die in ignorance. Uh, I think no normal uh, human being will subject uh, others to something that is harmful. And as such, as uh, leaders, we have come to present ourselves so that we can be vaccinated against this monster called uh, COVID-19. We had to train at the state level in terms of handling the vaccines and administering the vaccines. The vaccination exercise will continue across the 23 local government areas of the state. In Makudi, Blessing Omeche Ebute, NTA News. The federal government has demonstrated its commitment through its agency, Hydroelectric Power Producing Areas Development Commission, Hyperdeck, to address ecological risk areas caused by overflow of hydroelectric power dams in Benue State and five others in the north central geopolitical zone. Chairman Governing Council of the Commission, Joseph Tiav, stated this when he led members of the board on a visit to Governor Samalotum. Charles Abba has more. It would be recalled that in 1999, the Benue State Government under Governor George Akumi indicated that fixing of ecological damages in various parts of the state would cost not less than three billion naira. It is to tackle these challenges that the Chairman Governing Council, Hydroelectric Power Producing Areas Development Commission, Hyperdeck, Joseph Tiav, has elicited synergy with the Benue State Government. The hydroelectric power producing area development law gives us the mandate to alleviate the sufferings of the most affected communities in areas where the dams usually overflow. Governor Samuel Otom, who congratulated the chairman and members of the board for the confidence reposed in them by President Mohamed Buhari, urged them to maintain justice, fairness and equity in all their engagements as they strive to achieve the commission's mandate. The governor acknowledged the adverse ecological risks and impacts on human existence and assured Hyperdeck that the state government would give full support for the success of the project. My prayer and encouragement to all of you is this assignment that you have been given. Please do your best. And make sure you leave a mark. The board members also visited a number of ecological risk areas in the state to ascertain the extent of damages preparatory to fixing them. They also visited the Paramount Ruler in Benue South Senatorial District, His Royal Majesty the Ochidoma, Elias Ikoye Bepa, to seek his fatherly blessings and cooperation in Makudi, Charles Abba, NTA News. You're watching Nationwide. Jenny Bassi in Port Harcourt will be our guide after this short break. The vaccine offers hope for a safe country free of coronavirus. I urge all state governments, traditional and religious leaders, to take the lead in the mobilization effort within their environment and spheres of influence. I similarly urge all eligible Nigerians to present themselves and be vaccinated 
in accordance with the order of priority already mapped out at the various authorized designated centers only. Life is a game. We are cool. We are trendy. Energy moves us. Sports is our game, our oxygen. Because with the round leather, we ball. We hustle. All over the land, north and south, we are united in the positive glory. We are encapsulated by high fill. We live for the game. It's game time. Showing on MTN Network. Derby win. The Gunners travel to take on the Hammers in another London Derby. Will they make it two out of two? Find out as West Ham take on Arsenal at the London Stadium this Sunday on the Premier League Live, showing on the network service of the NTA from 3.30 p.m. The Premier League Live is brought to you by Access Bank, Baba Ijebu, Lipton T, and Close Up in association with Goal.com. And welcome to Port Harcourt. Governor Yeson Wiki has nominated, has been nominated as the independent newspaper governor of the year 2020, following his many infrastructural development in the state. The nomination later was presented to the governor when he played host to the board of editors of the newspaper at Government House Port Harcourt. We're getting your query reports. Governor Wike bemoaned the sudden indifference exhibited by the Nigerian Union of Journalists to the current challenges confronting the nation. He charged journalists in the country to speak up against public officers and hold them accountable to the people. Whatever we have done or whatever we have achieved that people are honoring us is because our people believed in us, because our people are giving us support, and because we are all standing with us. If not, we will not have achieved what you may think we have achieved for you to bestow this honor on us. Managing Director and Editor-in-Chief of Independent Newspapers Limited, Mr. Steve Omanu Feme, said the visit was to notify the governor of his nomination by the newspaper as governor of the year 2020 for infrastructural development, sports and contribution to national development. We celebrate you because of your doggedness, your, that uncanny tenacity of the goals you've set for yourself. Even the infrastructure we see today, you, you are still working as if you are just beginning your term. The editor-in-chief advised that the governor should remain steadfast and delivering good governance to the people. M. Port Harcourt, Oge Dinyekwe, NTA News. In line with global trend of cashless economy, the Kwaibom state government is working on modalities to key rural women into the concept of easy financial transactions. Commissioner for Women Affairs and Social Welfare Dr. Inir Yakban says 
move is to carry rural women along in financial pursuit for self-development. Emedia Omo reports. Over the years, rural women have been struggling to make ends meet in their small-scale businesses without knowing the latest financial approach to manage income that generates from their businesses. Prior to this, the Kwaibom State Government is introducing cashless policy to the rural women to engage and carry them along in modern-day financial world to enhance their business prospects. I think the digitization has to do with management of your money and no longer keeping your money in the house. I feel, I feel uh, very happy to open accounts today for the first time. Commissioner for Women Affairs and Social Welfare, Dr. Ini Adiakpan, enjoined the women to endeavor to save their income in the bank to avoid theft and to use their income properly. The women of Akwaibo State will be supporting his in his industrialization drive, if we can rise up and then start doing something, start some small, small industries that will grow big into something large. A financial expert and GSM operator says cashless transaction provides open door for anyone to engage in financial business at their comfort. As women in the rural areas are enlightened on the effective management of their income, it is their hope that the small-scale business experience tremendous growth. In Uyo, Emedi Omo, NTA News. And that's it from here. Najatu is back to you in Abuja. Thank you. Nationwide continues in Meduguri, where Mohammed is standing by. Thank you indeed, Najatu, and welcome to Meduguri. Frontline health workers in University of Meduguri Teaching Hospital, UMTH, have partook in the ongoing COVID-19 vaccination in the state. The chief medical director of the hospital, Professor Ahmed Ahijo, led other health workers and frontline workers to receive the vaccine. Paul Kujavana has details. University of Meduguri Teaching Hospital was where the index case of COVID-19 was recorded, which exposed many health workers to the virus with few deaths availing themselves to the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccination was to protect themselves and build confidence of the public on the safety of the vaccine. So many people are skeptical about it, but you can say I've done my own and I believe in it that it's beneficial and I urge every person to do it for their own protection. Sensitivity and specificity is within acceptable limits. I just took the vaccine less than five minutes, and so far, apart from the slight pain at the injection site, there is no anything that I can feel for now. So I will be watchful for the next maybe six to eight hours to see if there's anything that is going on, and I'm ready to document everything that I'm going to. Sir Ibrahim Kida, who after a week of taking the vaccine, shared his experience, saying... The side effect varies from person to person. I can tell you up till today, I did not have any side effects. This vaccine has shown efficacy. We've seen it. So, and we're moving on with the vaccine. So, you can actually take this vaccine on the left or the right. Just about usage. I took mine on the, on, the, on the left because I usually use my right. According to him, the efficacy and safety on under 18-year persons have not been proven scientifically, as research is still ongoing on that. In Meduguri, calling Kujavana, NTA News. Some cheering news. Nigeria has won first position in the International Quran Competition of Kenya 2021. Nigeria's representative Borno Bon Al Bashir Usman Gwani Idris won the competition where 50 countries participated. Here are more details of the report. Borno State Nigeria has over the years made its mark as home of Quranic knowledge that has existed for over a thousand years and maintains this status by winning global Quranic competition, latest of which is the International Quranic Competition of Kenya 2021. <laughs> On arrival to Meduguri, Al Bashir was greeted with appreciation by the State Deputy Governor Umar Osman Kadafur and a long list of Islamic scholars. The winner also presented his certificate to the chief imam of Borno, Zanalesu Ibrahim Ahmad, who enjoined the younger generation to emulate him in all fields of knowledge beneficial to mankind. At the head of his family, Goni Idris's residence in Gori Mashamari area of Jere local government, Al-Bashir arrived home to a rousing reception by family members 
local government councillors of the area, and Islamic scholars, where prayers were offered for more prosperity to Nigeria and lasting peace. Those are the stories from Medugri. The rest of Nationwide continues with Najatu. Thank you very much, Mohammed. This year's Technology and Innovation Expo has ended, and the federal government is rewarding the first, second, and third winners in all the categories with the sum of 1 million naira, 750,000 naira, and 500,000 naira. The Minister of Science and Technology, Dr. Obonai Onu, who made the announcement, said it was to help build a new culture of science and technology in the country. He said the ministry believes that when challenged, the best can come from the nation's researchers, inventors, and innovators. Should not forget that by giving our young people the necessary and appropriate skills will provide the unique opportunity to effectively mobilize them for nation building. This is what science, technology, and innovation can do for our dear nation. So for young people of our dear nation, I say to you, don't be afraid. The future of our dear nation is bright. And on that scientific note, we conclude the news on Nationwide. Do remember to be a star and stand with the NTA against rape and rapists.